In this video, I've compiled seven of the most important hidden features in Procreate Dreams. These are the types of features that you really can't live without. So watch to the end of this video and I guarantee that you'll learn something that will change the way you use Procreate Dreams. Alright, this is a very important one and it's also so unintuitive that I struggled with this for a while, especially since there's barely any info available right after launch. So you want to use your Procreate brushes, but there seems to be no way of importing them. For a while I assumed you just couldn't, because there's absolutely no option anywhere for it, and you don't even have access to brush settings. But there actually is a way to. So what you have to do is turn Procreate Dreams into split screen, and then open up Procreate. Find the brush you want to transfer, and drag it over. You can also transfer entire folders of brushes. Now, this is important. If you try to drag it into the brushes section to import it, it won't work. Instead, you have to drag it into this section. No clue why it's like this, but now you know. As soon as you start drawing and trying to animate, you might instantly find yourself really wishing you could adjust the brush stabilization, the pressure sensitivity, all that good stuff but it's just missing, and yep, it's not here in Procreate Dreams. And you can't even adjust the brush settings in Procreate Dreams. This can be quite a frustrating deal breaker for a lot of people. But there is a workaround that I found out about, which will get you like 90% of the way there. So what you can do instead is go to Procreate, find the brush you want to be more stabilized slash react differently, and then adjust its settings. You can also turn your global stabilization and pressure sensitivity to default if you want to make it truly accurate to what it'll feel like in Procreate Dreams. Anyways, once you're happy, you can do the brush import technique I talked about earlier. And now all the brush stabilizations will carry over. You can see that this is the case if we do some extreme examples. When doing frame by frame animation, this flipbook mode might feel a little limiting. Sometimes you might really wish you could have a better idea of how your current frame is interacting with your others in the timeline and with past frames, and just how it looks overall. If you try to add in new frames like in the flipbook mode by holding down on the clips, then you'll see that there isn't a frame add option but you actually can add frames in this timeline mode. The way to do this, which I had to search for a good bit to find, is that you double tap the timeline in a drawing mode. Sometimes it might take it multiple double taps. Then you should have this plus icon that will allow you to easily split your frames while still maintaining a view of your timeline. It's important to note that this won't work in any other mode, only in drawing mode. This is also how you can animate frame by frame without being forced to go into the flipbook mode, which can feel limiting if you want to see the rest of your timeline. After using Procreate Dreams for a bit, you might have noticed that moving around in the timeline might feel a little bit clunky. Like when trying to zoom in and out of your timeline, the frames sometimes get squashed in weird ways that you really don't want, and everything gets moved around. But there's a better way to navigate the timeline which is to use the three fingers to swipe horizontally or vertically. What this does is that it allows you to zoom in and out in just one direction and without moving your timeline. I found that this is much quicker for me to see what I want. This also allows you to fix weird timeline squashes when it happens. If you go to track select mode and highlight all the frames so you can move all them together, then you'll find that it doesn't work how you want it to. And yeah, as of now, you can't move frames around like this in a Procreate Dreams. But obviously, moving the frames around one by one isn't an option. So a workaround you can do is to group all the frames you want to move together, and then move them. After that, you can ungroup them. If you've tried to extend a frame in your animation, you might have found that it doesn't really work the way you'd expect it to. Like, it doesn't push the rest of your frames back. You could and might already have been using the technique I just talked about in order to move them all back. 
And while that technique is good for other things, it's still a little inefficient for this. Instead, what you can do is select the edge of the frame you want to extend and hold down with one finger on the screen. Then it will allow you to extend properly. And this pushes the rest of the frames backwards. When you create an animation, you might have had a certain canvas size that you were thinking of, but you have only these options here, and there's no way to create a custom canvas size. So you might have assumed you just can't, but there is a way to. The way to do this is to go into your canvas settings and then click on the numbers here. This allows you to change the canvas size to whatever you wish. And you can tell the real size of the canvas by looking at this rectangular box. The stuff inside is what will be seen when you export your animation. This is a bonus little tip. You might have tried changing the name of your animation, but when you went to the animation settings here, it just doesn't let you. But you can change the name of your animation if you go back out here and then click and hold on your animation. Now you have the option to rename it. Anyways, I hope you learned something from this video. If you did it, then be sure to like and subscribe. If you want more tips, then there's a bunch more hidden features and tips that I featured in my Procreate Dreams tutorial, which you can check out right here. Anyways, thanks for watching.